Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here um, on the Knights of War as we provide you another update on the haunt season for 2022. Um, as always, my name is Sam. It's your boy, Tony, over there. Uh, we're going to discuss a lot of things today, including some updates for Midsummer Scream, Knott's Berry Farm, and probably what most of you are here for based upon our title is Horror Night. So uh, what's up, Tony? What do we got today uh, coming out, coming off? Fresh off the pipeline. Well, let's start with Not Scary Farm uh, because it's the least, well, it's only one bit of news. But um, Not's Network uh, has been posting, you know, they, they're they very loyal to, of course, Not's Berry Farm. Um, very nice people and whatnot. Uh, been posting some behind the scenes stuff from, uh, you could see from the marketplace. And it looks to be where Paranormal was at that we have uh, a lot of preparations going forward for Not Scary Farm. So that's really looking good. Obviously, you know we're going to be getting a new maze right there where Paranormal used to be. Uh, as to what that is, we do not know yet. We won't probably find we won't find out until they uh, get ready to announce it. But nonetheless, we're seeing a lot of preparations getting rolled out, a lot of prep uh, happening. I know they have overnight crews. I know they have people during the day and stuff to work behind the scenes. So um, as far as Knots goes, I mean, it looks like there there's a lot of preparations going, a lot of um, – prepping costuming and whatnot of, of going so let's let's see what happens i mean uh, with knots construction it's a little bit more hard to uh kind of not only speculate but um to to capture because a lot of their mazes are behind the scenes that a lot of people can't see there's only, i think only like a few handful here and there that you can see construction wise but uh we're going to keep doing our best to give you the uh best information and construction updates possible for not scary farm as that goes now not Scary Farm rolling around the corner uh, pretty soon. Uh, we're, we're getting closer and closer. We're about to answer summer. Um, what's one thing you were looking forward to this this season for Not Scary Farm? Yeah, definitely. Great question, Tony. Uh, I think what I'm looking forward to most is to see what that new maze is. I mean, we ha I have very high expectations on what Knots can do since, you know, everything that they basically put out is uh, 10 out of 10. Uh, makes you want to slap your mama. It's so good. Um, so... You know, especially with last year with Mesmer, uh, 2019 with uh, Origins. Um, I, I don't know what came prior to that. Uh, but I, I feel like every time Knots keeps stepping their game up and uh, and doing better. And I think I'm just really excited for that because I know that, like, for example, last year with Warring 20s, you know, they, they had here. And then, you know, I'm expecting them to go here. You know what I mean? Uh, going forward. And I, I definitely think they, they keep raising the bar for themselves. Um, so I'm really excited for that. And then obviously just to, to, to smell the fog um, as we inch closer to that 50th anniversary, I know that it's only going to continue to grow um, until we hit that milestone. Yeah, definitely. Um, now with knots, obviously there's a little comparison in this next topic, obviously, but um, slider dynamics, our good friend Scott Dierman is uh, doing a panel for his company at midsummer scream. Uh, and I'm very much looking forward to this only because um, I've gotten to help out a little bit, uh, helping them organize uh, some things and whatnot. So it's been cool to see behind the scenes things of thing of stuff. But um, it's really cool to see uh, Scott finally getting some recognition for his company, Slider Dynamics. Obviously started in 2020, the start of the pandemic. Uh, it's been kind of a, a rough a little rough for him in the beginning, but it's starting to gain some traction, and I'm hoping with this panel it gains even more traction and, and more uh, business his way, and he can eventually become a full-time contracted uh, sliding coach. Yeah, I definitely agree. I, I definitely super excited for Scott's panel. I'm, the one thing I can guarantee is this man has so much knowledge when it comes to sliding, um, and he has been, and he definitely has a heart of pouring into others and and spreading that knowledge. Um, so I'm really excited to see what he's going to bring to that panel. I know that it's going to be very educational um, and informative. So uh, even whether you're, uh, you know, nothing about sliding or you've, you know, been in the, the industry for a long time, I definitely think he's going to bring something special for everyone in the audience um, and, and really uh, make it pretty like break, break it down. Cause I definitely think there's a, a lot of misconceptions when it comes to sliding. And I definitely think he's going to provide a lot of insight in that area um, when it comes to sliding. Um, and, and the holistic approach to sliding that, you know, he takes um, and those that he helps, um, you know, really educates them to take. Because uh, it's definitely more than just uh, putting some pads on and hitting the ground. There's a, there's a lot more that goes into it. And I definitely think he 
um, is going to you know provide a lot of insight in that area. A hundred percent. I mean, I talk with him all the time, and uh, you know he he's always telling me old stories and and other things, and uh, so I'm excited to see what he has with this. And like I said, I'm just hoping it grabs more uh, traction to his business, and and we can have more people uh, hire him. Uh, either it be independent haunts, uh, big haunts, whatever it is, maybe travel even the world, go overseas. Like hopefully this opens up more doors and opportunities for him to expand and 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 pass down his knowledge as a business and whatnot, and and ultimately deliver the mission statement of what he's providing as a as a program. So I'm very much excited to uh, to see what he has to say. Um, now we're gonna go over on the East Coast for a little bit, just for a second, because something. Uh, a little bit sad happened this week uh, at Universal Studios Florida, um, and I'm, I was fortunate enough to see this when I took my trip out there, and it was a really cool uh, restaurant, but Universal Studios Classic Monsters Cafe has officially closed its doors and will be revamped into a new uh, themed dining experience. Um, that being said, it's looking like that area is, is focused more on illumination and whatnot, so I wouldn't doubt if it becomes like a Gru's Test Kitchen or something. Um, so I'm a, uh, I, I'm a, a very sad about this because there was a lot of cool memorabilia in there, a lot of cool uh, like posters and whatnot, and the theming overall just looked dope. Um, and I'm sad that you didn't get to see it. I mean, this was something that was when I walked in, I was like, this is really cool. I can easily spend money here to to enjoy a dope dining experience. On top of that, they're playing the classic monster movies everywhere, so it's really cool to see all that. But it's going to be missed. It's very sad. Um, I know you haven't gotten a chance or. You, now you won't ever get a chance to see it, but uh, what are your thoughts about this? I mean, this is kind of a huge, uh, in my opinion, this is a huge L right here because, you know, I mean, especially, I think it's a more huge L for the Haunt community because it's classic monsters, but this is obviously something that's a legacy of, of Universal. So what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, no, I definitely think it's sad, but I definitely think you want to, if, you know, if that area is going to be focused on illumination, you want to make sure you're having solid focus. Um not saying the Universal Monsters aren't family fr family friendly, but I think you want to keep a focus. But I think, you know, putting a positive spin on this, I believe when Universal opens their third 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 theme park, Epic Universe or whatever it's called, um, the Universal Monsters are getting their own land. Um, so that, that memorabilia is not going to go to waste. I definitely think that um, it's the end of Universal Monsters dining at Universal Studios Florida or Orlando whatever it's called yeah it's, for now so, so yeah that one's that one's just Universal Studios and then an Island Adventure then there'll be Epic Universe so yeah Universal Studios did lose Monster Cafe but you do make a good point they could potentially just be moving it over there to fit the better off overall uh, theming of the land which would make more sense there so it, it may not be the end of the Universal Monsters Cafe it, it is in Universal Studios but it probably won't be in the park, we're just gonna have to wait to see what Epic Universe has to deliver. I mean, we're hearing rumors of a, a Universal Monsters land, which that alone is gonna make me want to go take a trip out there just to see that. And I, I know Sammy's on board with me on that one because you know the Universal Monsters, in our opinions, are goats. So it's gonna be uh, exciting to see if that's what's the next move for this is, or if they're gonna do maybe a whole new revamped dining experience. Um, for the land specifically, maybe more character interactions, uh, more themed foods, um, and, and generally just more of an in-depth focus on the Universal Monsters. Not saying this didn't do that, but maybe they'll add more than what they had in this location. So, should be great. Now, let's let's come back over to Holly, Hollywood. Um, we got a lot of construction. A lot of pictures are popping <laughs> up. Facades are coming out. We're getting confirmations. Not really... 100% confirmations, but based off speculation and based off things that we know in the, in the horror realm uh, and, and things that's happened in the past at Universal Studios, Halloween Horror Nights in Hollywood, uh, we're getting confirmations that we're probably going to be getting a lot of returning mazes and uh, a bunch of new themed ones. Uh, we already got confirmation from one maze, and we'll, we'll talk about that right now, which is Universal Monsters Legends Collide. Um, this is going to be cool. For right now, we're seeing advertised Dracula, the Mummy, and the Wolfman. Uh, obviously, three of the most popular Universal monsters out there, too. Um, and we already know Slash is already working on the soundtrack for this year's maze. Um, we have a facade up, but that maze is looking really beautiful. The facade is looking beautiful. We got a brick wall. It's looking like it's a packaging company. Uh, it's kind of getting me questions as to what we're going to see and how they're going to present this maze like if we're going into a, a warehouse and is this going to be just a giant warehouse of these legends fighting or are we going to get scenes from the films or 
is this going to be another? I mean, I'm assuming this is going to be another original story, much like uh, the Bride of Frankenstein lives. So, what are your thoughts on on Universal Monsters Legend Collide? Yeah, I definitely. Um, uh, if you're a longtime fan of the channel, first time caller, um, you know that uh, we love Universal Monsters. We've been in love with what Hollywood has been doing with them since uh, 2018. Yes. Um, so you know, this will be the fourth iteration i believe if i if i can count correctly yes um and i definitely think that every year they have delivered and exceeded expectations um so i'm expecting nothing but greatness i'm definitely already putting this in my top three mazes of 2022 and i haven't even stepped foot in it <laughs> uh, so that that's not a prediction that is a spoiler, spoiler. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I believe there, uh, I don't have the description in front of me of what the picture had said on the website, um, but it's basically they're fighting over some artifact. I have it uh, right here. I got let's, you. Let's read the, descri read the description for us. And then we'll, one universal monster was scary. How about three? Better summon your scream squad because you're about to get caught in the middle of an epic battle between the Wolfman, Dracula, and the mummy together for the first time ever. Their mission to find the amulet that will break their curse and they'll destroy anyone who gets in the way. Yeah, so what I'm expecting is based upon the facade you had mentioned of it being like a trading company, I'm imagining that trading company went in there, took that artifact, um, and now those three are going to be raising hell to get that artifact uh, to accomplish what they need to accomplish. So I imagine we're just going to be in the middle of that turmoil. Yeah. What that turmoil looks like, I'm not exactly sure. Um, so I don't imagine we are going to be getting actual scenes from the mummy, the Dracula, um, or anything of that sort. But what I would do imagine is there might be some callbacks to some scenes from there. Um, but I really trust John Murdy because I know that he has a deep love for the Universal Monsters, um, that he's going to put on a great original story um, that will have nods to the originals, um, you know, the, the 1920s, 30s classics. And we'll have great original music behind it. Oh, I can also guarantee that. Uh, Slash has, once again, like like everything with this maze, not only met expectations, but exceeded them, which is fantastic to me. Um, so I'm really excited. I, I know that there was some leaked footage. I, I know we've alluded to this prior of like some of the like the Sphinx and stuff like that that were in there, which are gonna be super sick. Um, so I, I definitely think it's going to be a good maze. I really like the mazes that have come out of that area um, recently. Um, so I'm excited to see what they do there. Um, and uh, I'm I'm just I'm waiting for the official announcement because I know that they accidentally updated the website. Yeah. Um, which they could have done just to to stir up some trouble, which wouldn't surprise me. Because uh, I mean, we can just go back to Devil's Den with yeah. knots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so well, it wouldn't surprise me if they they just were messing around. You know, something to take in into consideration too. We're in May of 2022 already. Um, yeah. and we're pretty, you know, I mean, last year was different. I mean, last year was a, uh, a little Kobe monitor because they didn't know if they were going to do it or not. So that's why we got announcements real late. I wonder if the reason why they're kind of holding back on announcements again this year is because with the spike in, in COVID again, if they're, they're still, I mean, it's looking like it's going to happen regardless, but I wonder if they're doing the kind of thing to kind of maybe limit capacity if, if it comes down to that by that time we get there or if they're just, if they're just waiting on, I don't know what they're waiting on, but it looks like a lot of these mazes are already pretty much getting, they're already, they've already gone vertical. They're, they're built. Um, it's just a matter of, of, you know, designing and, and decorating them and, and putting all the props and everything. And so I wonder what, what the holdup is this year for uh, announcements. And this goes for um, a few haunts around because uh, we haven't gotten announcements from Horror Nights either on Orlando or Hollywood other than via, you know, leaks. Um, and then Knott's hasn't announced anything yet. So it's looking like we could have a busy summer, especially with announcement season. I mean, we're getting closer and closer to Midsummer Scream. I mean, you know, summer is literally a few weeks away, um, starting in, you know, June. So I, I, I'm excited to see when we start. I want to I want to give a prediction and say we're going to get our first HHN announcement, maybe end of May, early June. Yeah, I definitely think um, if I was HHN, I would be waiting on those announcements. I know that tickets have already gone on sale for Orlando's event. I don't believe tickets have gone on sale for L.A. Um, so they might just be waiting 
till they're going to put those tickets out and then put an announcement and then really see that spike. Um, but I'm fine with them just waiting and holding on to us uh, because I feel like they might lose a little bit of traction if you're announcing too much too early um, because people are going to be like, all right, cool, I'm excited for this. But like, if you start slowly getting as we you know get tickets and then we get an, a little announcement, we get another announcement and another announcement, um, I definitely think that has the opportunity to really stir up that buzz um, and keep the uh, keep not keep the fans happy, but uh, keep the the pocketbook happy because uh, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's move upstairs to the Parisian courtyard because I know you're gonna have a ball going through this maze. Um, the speculated Parisian courtyard maze, which is uh, La Llorona, is currently uh, it's looking like La Llorona. It really is from 2011 and 2012. Um, we got the church bells on the on the facade. It's looking like the old church, so it's looking like almost. I'm about 90% certain La Llorona's coming back now after seeing this facade. It, it's you know the only the only 10% is the confirmation from Universal's themselves finally announcing it, but. I mean, what do you what are, what are your thoughts? I know you never got to see this. This is something that you have uh, looked up though, and you are interested in seeing. So, what are your thoughts and excitement about this? Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beat a dead horse because I know in our previous announcement we we did uh, go through this um, that Lyrona is probably happening based upon what the look of the facade is. Yeah, um, I'm super excited for it. Um, I definitely think it has a lot of potential. Um, I know that uh, some of our friends over at TLV, uh, a man named Tom, is is not believing it. He'll believe it when he sees it, because he, according to him, John Murdy said he would never do Lyrona again because of his children. Um, so, if that's the case, then uh, they really pulled a fast one on us by building the exact same facade that they used. Which, once again, I'm all for it because I think that is so funny if they built a facade only to get rid of the facade and then build something else. <laughs> That'd be the ultimate <laughs> troll, but that would only be like, I mean, look how much detail and design has been put into it already. It's like, it, the bricks look great. It looks like an old abandoned, something you'd see off the side of a road. The bells yeah. are up, you know, I mean, if you're this far into production, then you're going to have to change it. I mean, this is an original too, so there's no, there's no like, oh, they pulled the rights. Like, no, this is an original you guys did. There's yeah. no pull. If you guys pull it, then it looks a little shady at that point. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think, um, that I definitely think it's coming. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like 90s. I, I'm going as far as saying I'm 97% sure. There's like that two or 3% chance of, you know, what if, uh, <laughs> which I, I live in that two or 3%. I want the what if to happen just because I think it's funny. But, <laughs> I think it would uh, be hilarious too, honestly. <laughs> like I've already seen this maze. So I, whether it was here or not, I wouldn't care. Yeah. Um, but I, I definitely think it's, it's coming. Um, and I definitely think it's it's going to be a, a good time. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know when each and nightmares, I believe I said their name correctly this time. I don't know when their next speculation map is, um, but I, I definitely am excited to see what that is going to look like. Um, and uh, just uh, going back to just moving on the conversation to another part of the park over in that Curious George area. I know that those facades are coming up strong, just like the uh, Parisian courtyard. So I know that the, one of them on the like left side, if you're looking from the parking garage, is supposed to be um, an American werewolf in, werewolf London. in London. Yeah. I'm I know that facade's that coming back, up. Way. I know that some other people have looked at that facade and said, maybe it's going to be a, a, a couple other things, but I, I definitely think it's going to, to be that. And it definitely, and it looks like it's getting a new facade because I believe it was the bar previously. The slaughtered lamb. I would hope they would do the slaughtered lamb again, but I mean that'd be the most iconic one to do. But at this point, it is what it is. I mean, I just want to see that maze again and see how he can update it or do something different to it. Yeah, and and I think this is this is a uh, a feeling I'm having is if they are going to be doing a, a lot of re, like repeat mazes and if they're just making a couple slight changes, I'm completely fine with that because if that means that that time and energy is going over to these newer mazes, um, I, I definitely like that. I think that's what Knotts has done well over the last few years is making slight updates to the to their mazes that they're bringing back um, and really just keeping the, the life in those mazes. Um, and then really putting 150% into their new stuff. So if HHN can fo really follow that same suit of, hey, we're going to bring back five original mazes 
our five mazes that we've done previously, and then we're going to sprinkle in these other like three or four that are newer. I'm fine with that. I oh, know that that's not an opinion a lot of other people share. No, a hundred. Like, I, I, I hundred. Per, I'm a hundred percent with on board with you on that. I, I think my only complaint with last year was a lot of the repeat mazes that we got were from 2019, and that was the last year that we had Horror Nights before 2021. Um, so that was kind of my issue. Like Halloween Four, I, I thought Halloween Four actually was a little bit better. Um, yeah. because they added some new stuff that, that wasn't in the 2019 version, so that was cool. Same thing with Pandora's Box. I did enjoy Pandora's Box, and, and you and I both have talked very highly of that maze. It's, it's such a, a, a wonderful original, and they updated some stuff in that as well. I, I would say the only uh, one that I had an issue with this year really was um, The Exorcist because, and, and, and it was different for you because that was your first time going through, but for me it was like it, it, there's not much you can do more with that film. And, and that property, and so it was basically a repeat. The only thing was it was in a soundstage, so it made it a little bit more darker, and it laid it, and they had a controlled um, environment, which was cool. But other than that, I mean, yeah, we got we got scared because we couldn't see shit, but and we were we were we were terrified that Reagan or Pazuzu was gonna pop out at us any moment because we couldn't see anything. Um, but other than that, like that, I think that was my only really big complaint for um, that and Hill House were the only two really big complaints that I had for last year's season. Everything else, I. I I really enjoyed for what we got. If if I if I could make one thing change of 2021, I would flip them. I would put Hill House in the uh, the soundstage, yeah. give it a larger footprint, uh, and put some more scare actors in there because I think that was our biggest issue. Was it we was may have gone through a cast uh, change? Yeah, that, that's you know not completely fair. Yeah, I think it was aesthetically pleasing to look at, but it felt like we kind of started slow had a slight build and then it was over there was just no like peak to it yeah whereas i feel like most other mazes that we had went and into uh is they have a a strong start they may take a slight dip and then just build 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 and then you get to that end they get to the exit right yeah whereas hill house it kind of just walked in and it was kind of like uh -huh. and and i've seen a couple other people i've watched their walkthroughs of it with like lights on and it looks aesthetically pleasing to look at but it just wasn't. I, I think we just I got the, the 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 bad run through when we went through, honestly. And yeah. and honestly, you and I have said this many times in the last year. But 2021 obviously gets a pass. There wasn't a lot of people uh, that they're working there at the haunts usually than there is, you know, in, in pre uh, pre COVID. And that's because a lot of people were just still on edge about things. And and 100, percent I'm with you on that because you know you're gonna be you know as as the monster as the scare actor, you're the ones. In the in the in the guest face, you, you know, especially with mazes and stuff, there wasn't very much you know room between you and the guest, um, and you got kind of a smaller spot. I mean, there, you know, you got your spot to to pop out of and whatnot, but you know, there wasn't a lot of talent and, and you know monsters and scare actors a lot this year because of of COVID. It was still pretty fresh off of you know going to bigger events and whatnot. So, 2021 gets gets a, a, a an easy pass because uh, you know COVID was still kind of up in the air with things. You know, in the beginning of the pandemic. You know, a lot of people, some haunts weren't offering masks, and then in the end, they were like, you have to put it on, you know. So it was kind of everywhere. So I'm hoping this year, you know, being that they kind of recovered from 2021, they, they made somewhat of a profit in 2021, that we come back a little bit stronger this year, and we get back that HHN fill again. Um, speaking of that HHN fill, I mean, Waterworld, man. The walls have gone up. It looks like they're starting to go vertical, man. I, I'm, I'm excited to see what comes to Waterworld this year. Yeah, I, I was just about to ask you that. I, I was I haven't seen anything from Waterworld just yet. Right. Um I don't have H N Nightmares map up, but what's supposed to go in there? I don't know if you know off the top of your I head. I have to see if I even still have that map. I have it on my computer. I can try to I have find it on my it. phone, I thought, but I gotta see what folder it's under. Wait, um, on, I got you. I got you, I think. Yeah, you're gonna have uh, to do it. Is it Ooh, where is it? Oh, Candyman is supposed to be there. According Interesting, yeah. So Candyman, I think, was speculated in 2021. And if that is true, uh, it could be coming to Universal. And this should be a no compared to most properties. Like, And that's the thing. I don't know what it's... <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, I don't know what the process is of, of how... 
licensing works as far as licensing properties to use for a seasonal event. Um, because in the past we were, you know, and it's only been speculation, so nothing was confirmed, but you speculate one thing and then the next map, that thing is scrapped. So I, I don't know how licensing works and, and how it works with, with events like this, but as far as I know, and, and Candyman was a universal film produced by Jordan Pill, uh, Monkey Paw Productions, which is, um, I, I believe also Blumhouse may have been a producer on it, but not like a major producer like they usually are. It was more Monkey Paw because Monkey Paw and Blumhouse worked together. Um, so I'm excited to see if they do Candyman this year, if it's going to be the original, if it's going to be the new one. If it's going to be the new one, I definitely have to watch it then. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it'll be the new one. Um, and I think one thing that the new one does have going for it is it does have some like callbacks to the uh, original Candyman movie. So I definitely think it leaves the opportunity to do a little bit of a hybrid. So that means we can probably expect Tony Todd at the opening night if, if it does come. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, he'll probably be there, which would yeah. be cool. But uh, on top of what you were about to say, though, I, I, and you can maybe inform me because I haven't seen it. Does does the movie have enough material to be a maze? Yeah, it has some moments. It has some moments. Does so, it? Uh, and, and, the, and I think another good thing is the footprint typically in that water world queue is not as large as some of the other areas. Right. Um, so um, they can definitely pack in some pack in some stuff into that small area because that's, a, I think, like a three and a half minute, four minute walkthrough, whereas like some of the other walkthroughs are like five, six minutes. Right. Um, so it, it, it definitely has material for that area. Okay, good. Well, I mean, it, it's kind of looking pretty good this year. I mean, Scarecrow, the rumored Scarecrow maze by Curious George is looking pretty much, I mean, it's probably mostly all interior work now, but yeah. outside is all painted. The facade is up. Uh, they're working uh, now uh, across the way where it's rumored to be uh, American Werewolf in London. And so far, um, wood is up. Uh, nothing's painted yet, but they're still, uh, they're building. Waterworld looks like it just got started. Parisian courtyard from the facade. I don't know how it looks inside, but it might just be interior and, and lighting and, and sound now. Um, same thing with Universal Monsters. So the event is moving along smoothly. Um, usually the last thing to work on is uh, what's rumored to be, well, it's actually been confirmed already, the Terror Tram uh, is making its return. As to the theming, we do not know yet, but um, that's usually the last thing they work on because there's not really much they got to put out there, just props and, and build some stuff in front of the Bates Motel. But that's about it. Um, but it's looking like pretty stacked lineup. I mean, just when I when I was doing my research for this video to look at what was going on and stuff, I, it was getting me really excited because I, you know, I, I just realized we we were literally three months away from haunt season. You know what I mean? Like he starts middle September, three and a half months, three and a half months usually. Um, we'll, call it short. we'll call it call it we'll call it even. We'll call it a good three three point five. <laughs> no, it makes it makes it better than than having a full four. Three point five yeah. is good enough for me. That, point, means, we'll say, that means it's another point five. I don't have point five months. I don't have to wait. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's looking good, man. So uh, out of everything we talked about today, I mean, uh, final thoughts, reactions, and and what you're most excited for. Yeah. What um my my final thoughts here are um I'll give you some more hope. We are filming today on the fifteenth of May. Yeah. So we are basically two months and two weeks from midsummer. Uh, Cause that's the end of July. Um, and then like you had said, because these announcements are not coming out as early as they've done in years prior. Uh, I definitely think that's just going to spell out more hype as we get closer and closer as things get announced. And um, I definitely hope that the announcements were as good as the announcements were for universal in 2021. Cause that was some of my favorite parts was watching those trailers. So I'm hoping we're going to get the same thing. Um, and I'm hoping that we're going to get more panels announced for midsummer as we get closer to the event. Um, Cause I know that I don't believe they've announced anything. I know one thing that they announced that I thought was super funny. Um, I, I think it was I either scrolled through it today or, or yesterday um, is the uh, actor that plays a uh, boo from monsters Inc is going to be at midsummer. Oh, hell which yeah, is a, bro. Which is a complete dub. That's even dub. though, that's, all, that's all we're going for right there. Like screw everything else. That's we need to go meet her and get an autograph and everything. Yeah, I know that. I know that it's not the scariest thing, but I thought it was so cool because Monsters Inc is the best. We scare because we care. We care. Yes, we scare because we care. 
uh you know Uzma Kappa were okay. I know that's from Monsters University, but I thought yeah, that was the funniest the uni- thing. It's the universe. Yeah, I thought Monsters that was super universe. cool. Uh, but back to the topic that people watching this probably care more about. Uh, I'm just really excited because I, I know, like I said, we're, we're about two weeks and two months from midsummer. We called it three and a half months till haunt season. Um, and I know that it's, it's going to be better than 2021 because uh, – like 2021 you know there was a lot of uncertainty and i feel like there's a lot more certainty in what's going on now right um i know that john murdy basically said he's written all of the scripts for all of the mazes already which is another w um and uh things are going up uh, across um across the parks so uh i'm just excited man what about you uh you know knots is always a big one for me knots is, is something to look forward to every season um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what Knotts rolls out this season as far as a new maze goes. Um, maybe some new story updates to Goring 20s, which was such a fantastic zone. So I'm, I'm hoping they get to expand on that zone more. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, Halloween Horror Nights, Universal Monsters is always a, a must for us. I mean, I love the Universal Monsters. Frankenstein's monster is my all-time favorite out of the monsters. Sadly, he won't be this year, but he was there last year, so it's okay. He needs a little little year off. I mean, I think he's the only one thus far, except for this year, that's been in every single maze. You know, he was in Universal Monsters, Frankenstein Meets the Wolfman, and The Bride of Frankenstein Lives. So yeah. I think it's time that we give him a year off. He deserves it. He, he's, been a, he's been a trooper, been the only one that's been sticking around for all three. So he deserves a year off. But, um, yeah, that looks good. I'm excited to see if, if it is Scarecrow out there by the Car- uh, Curious George. I'm excited to see what that's going to be about. Um, American Werewolf in London, that's one of my favorite werewolf movies of all time. So if that comes, I'm excited for that. Um, Candyman, I have to watch, but if it's coming, uh, I, I could be excited. I, I could get real excited for that real quick. Um, and then Midsummer Scream, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we're coming closer, and a lot of great things are happening for a lot of great people in our lives. Um, and we're going to have a busy weekend. So I, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what happens that weekend. But, yeah, guys, that, I think that's pretty much about it for this update. Uh, I thought we'd come on just real quick to give you a quick update because there's been a lot of things happening. Um, and... I just got back from vacation, so it's good to finally get back to it and get full force getting ready for summer because summer is just as a busy season for us as um, as, as haunt season. I mean, I'm looking forward. Um, I'm going to Monster Palooza. We got Midsummer Scream. Um, so there's a couple things in, in store for us, and I'm, I'm very much looking forward to it. So stay tuned because if you guys uh, want to get all your, your latest haunt updates, uh, and, and horror updates come to the Knights of Horror subscribe to the channel leave a like leave some comments to see your excitement for the event um, and yeah I'm, I'm I got I got nothing else to say anything else yeah uh, if you had a good time drop a comment down below if you like the video put a like make sure you hit that subscribe button hit those bell notifications so you can be updated every time uh, but if nothing else we hope you have a great rest of your day and peace